So let's start. Assalamualaikum everybody. I hope you all are doing good. So today in GIT we are going to focus on anti-emetic drugs. So anti means against, emetic means vomiting. Okay. So we are today we are going to talk about drugs which are um, against nauseatic or vomiting. Okay. So starting for um, starting from where exactly uh, you see this vomiting reflex happens and everything. So I think uh, we first of all should know about the pathology or mechanism related to it, and then we'll talk about the how to combat these diseases. Not diseases, conditions actually. Okay. Uh, so guys, you can see that the main uh, things are being, uh, you know, here. Here's the diagram of the brain, and in this brain diagram, it is focused on uh, what actually causes all of these things. Okay. So if you have a rough view of the image, so you can easily see that H1. M1, D2, NK1, 5-HT3 receptors, they are prominent throughout the slide, right? Okay, so starting from here, which is vestibular system. So where is vestibular system? It is actually in your ear, okay? You must have seen this snail type bone. Uh, when you were in your junior classes, so this nail like bone is the vestibular system, okay? And it has H1 receptor and M1 receptor, which um, creates the nauseatic feelings, okay? All right, then talking about chemo receptor trigger zone. So you see, everybody, all of these are pointed towards this bluish thing, which, which is called vomiting center, okay? So it means that this vomiting center is being triggered and then all of the um, nauseatic feelings and everything happened, right? Okay. So uh, here, when we talk about here, okay. So here is the chemo receptor trigger zone, and this area is called area prostema. Now, if we look over here, it has D two receptor, NK one receptor, five HT three receptor. Now guys, before I dig into it, I want you all to know about it, that this area prostema, okay, this is um, a, sen a, a circumventricular structure at the caudal end of the fourth ventricle, okay? So this is the exact location of the structure. A brain has four ventricles, okay? As if you remember when we were discussing about different uh, types of doses and everything, so at that moment, we discussed this, that uh, there are four, so in the fourth, uh, uh, you know, area, there's area prostema. Now, uh, the amazing thing about area prostema is this, that it is located outside the blood vein barrier, okay? Now, uh, what happens is this, when it's outside the blood vein barrier, it means that any substance which is in the blood, which can trigger nausea or vomiting, um, it will, um, you know, reach the apparatus very quickly and then the effects would be produced, right? So uh, here, D2, NK1 and 5-H3 receptors, okay? It means we are going to do something to these receptors uh, because this is a very easy target, isn't it? That it's in the brain, but it's outside the brain, blood brain barrier, easy to approach, so definitely we have to take care of it. Okay, other than that, we have over here, okay, I'll talk vomiting center in the last. Okay, here, central nervous system. So you see, even the cortical region, uh, it can trigger uh, vomiting and everything. And also, in periphery, okay, in periphery, uh, you can find stuff there uh, which can trigger the nauseatic feelings and vomiting, okay? So see over here in medulla oblongata, this is located, the vomiting center, okay? And if you read in the book, they will say lateral reticular formation of the medulla. So if you see this red zone here, okay? So this is the location 
which uh, which is mentioned in the book okay so reticular formation is this part of the middle brain okay all right so medulla oblongata has this part which is called uh, reticular formation and this reticular formation you would find vomiting center okay all right now talking about vomiting reflex okay so you say you see guys as i covered up in my previous slide the areas that trigger vomiting are area prostrima vestibular apparatus ear okay peripheral uh, peripheral efferents from the pharynx git and genital higher cortical center so these are the four targets which create the feeling of vomiting and uh, sorry nausea and vomiting okay okay so when we talk about etiology okay so uh, in order to summarize everything that we have discussed so far that through the ve ve through the periphery okay so we have dopamine and serotonin secretion from the chemoreceptor trigger zone we have dopamine and serotonin and vestibular input releases histamine and acetylcholine and all of this uh, promotes the feeling of vomiting and nausea it means we have to target dopamine serotonin histamine and acetylcholine receptors right okay so uh, what do we have to agonist and what do we have to antagonist to summarize this uh, we have a slide here so you see guys uh, pain receptors via g1 efferents release of substance p substance p you will study in your further classes when you will study about cannabinoids and uh, opioid receptors and everything okay uh, so basically they trigger the nk1 receptors okay and the vestibular system and chemo receptor trigger zone as we have discussed already so all of these uh, trigger the vomiting center and then the uh, vomiting is being created and if we, we want to inhibit the vomiting thing so definitely we have to uh, use antagonist medicines which are focusing all of these and agonist cannabinoids okay cb1 receptor now antiemetic uses uh definitely when we say antiemetic drugs and what are their uses definitely they would be to stop nauseatic feelings and vomiting okay so what are they associated with the vomiting is not always that you have in um, digestion problems okay this is also associated with motion sickness chemotherapy induced emesis radiation induced emesis post operative nausea and vomiting okay okay so you guys see here this is one classification of drugs uh, which i have uh, tried to compile on one slide for you all so if you see over here again cytopaxin is d2 5hc3m1 h1 right and the, these drugs i'm sure you all know their names by heart now since we have studied ans just a few days ago weeks ago sorry so um, i assume that you all know this thing already okay so i'm not digging deep into it all right um i will cover all of these medicines in my upcoming slides so i am just moving through it uh, i want you to take a screenshot of this slide so so uh all right uh mohsin just sent me a message in the chat box that miss will paper happen yes they will happen okay uh they uh, they might not happen on 15 september definitely which uh, which made me procrastinate things a bit uh but definitely they'll happen okay and they'll happen in this month only so i would advise to you guys as soon as you study uh, through this um ppt so why don't you just open up the book and go through it so i'm sure you would uh, you know understand everything all right so yes papers are happening all right uh -huh. 
चलिए तो नाउ वी हैव एंटी एमिटिक्स कोलिनोस रिसेप्टर एंटीबॉडीज इफ यू लुक ओवर हियर दिस इज द बोनी स्ट्रक्चर ओके एंड दिस बोन इज कॉल्ड मिस्टोइड बोन नाउ इट हैज कैविटीज इन इट ओके एंड विद इन दिस कैविटी ओके देयर आर सर्टेन रिसेप्टर्स व्हिच एक्चुअली ट्रिगर द एमिटिक रिस्पोंसेस राइट ओके सो लेट्स रीड द स्लाइड एंड देन वी विल गो थ्रू इट the cholinergic antagonists reduce the excitability of labyrinth receptors now where are these receptors present they are present in this bony structure okay there are cavities uh, just like honeycomb cavities you know air spaces which is uh, not the, they are not air spaces they are filled okay but uh, they have these receptors okay so this cholinergic antagonist actually reduces excitability of these receptors and depress conduction from the vestibular apparatus to the vomiting center uh, they are not for nausea caused by chemotherapy it means that they are focusing on mo motion sickness and pre operative operation situations okay uh, since is anti cholinergic i'm sure you all would uh, recall the adverse effects caused by this medicine dry mouth nausea dry dosiness blood vision and everything now we do have a scopolamine and this is this comes in the patches remember we discussed these patches when our classes started initially when we were at university physically now scopolamine is a preferred agent because it has a relatively long duration of action and a more pronounced cns action transdermal delivery of scopolamine via skin patch decreases the incidence of adverse effects and produces relief for 72 hours okay again i'm getting a message okay guys uh, all of these advices that how should you prepare for the uh, exams and everything okay we would discuss it once the ppt would end okay and don't worry about the exams if when you have given the quizzes and everything so you are prepared already so uh, don't worry okay be confident just revise everything and then we'll talk more after when i'll turn off the recording okay acha now beta we are going to discuss anti emetic drugs which are focusing on histamine antagonists okay Uh, and in histamine we are focusing h1 receptor in your upcoming years you would study histamine more when you would talk about anti allergy medicines and all, all of that okay so but right now i want you to just memorize this that h1 receptor antagonism uh, inhibits vomiting okay so these uh, this class includes all of these medicines all right um uh, now these agents act by inhibiting histamine pathways and cholinergic pathways of the vestibular apparatus uh, when i started my lesson i talked about the snail like apparatus which is called vestibular apparatus so i have attached the diagram of the apparatus here just to you know uh, make you relate to it now it treats motion sickness and vertigo again remember not in chemotherapy okay you have to remember that this medicine is used for to treat motion sickness okay used for nausea and vomiting associated with pregnancy and adverse effects are sedation dry mouth and other cholinergic anti cholinergic side effects okay now uh when we talk about dopamine receptor antagonists so they include metoclopramide and phenothiazine and butyrophenone phenones so these agents include okay uh, so you see over here doperidol okay it is available in iv formulation so this is the only medicine about which you have to remember this one specific thing okay uh, these agents block dopaminergic receptors in the uh, uh, chemo uh, that trigger zone okay and um, appear to inhibit peripheral transmission to the vomiting center they also block alpha 1 adrenal receptors chloro uh, chlorocorperazine also blocks muscarinic cholinergic receptors 
these are used to treat CIE, RIE, and COMB. What are these? Uh, related to uh, MSS induced by chemotherapy, MSS induced by radiation, and post operative nauseatic and vomiting. Okay? All right. So, <clears throat> adverse effects include anticholinergic effects such as drowsiness, dry mouth, blurred vision, less pronounced with droperidol, uh, drop, extrapyramidal effects. Now, what are these extrapyramidal effects? These extra, whenever you hear about extrapyramidal effect, it means that the person cannot uh, walk properly and the muscle coordination is um, not, not well, okay? They face extreme difficulty when they walk and everything, okay? So muscular, like there's immobility, okay? And orthostatic hypotension, we have already talked about it. When you stand, if you feel dizziness, so that's orthostatic hypotension. So these agents are contraindicated in Parkinson's disease because of their extrapyramidal effect. What is Parkinson's disease? I, um, I don't know what word should I use for this Parkinson's disease. I really hate this disease. And I, I actually, uh, my focus in, during my MPhil was uh, Parkinson's disease. Now, uh, this disease, I don't like it because it produces immobility in a person. The person cannot coordinate their movement, okay? And, uh, you know, they're, they're hunched and uh, severe adverse effects are there, okay? As the disease um uh, like um, as the disease gets worsened so even the symptoms get worsened and the immobility increases to an extent the person would keep on standing for a for a very huge amount of time i tell you what i induced parkinson disease in rats and uh, will you believe it a rat who does not stand on one uh, at one place for a moment okay the rats to whom I induced this Parkinson disease in order to evaluate different medicines. So what happened, the rat literally could not move at all uh, for a minute. For a minute, it was still. Okay, I received one more message. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Good, good. I don't know who's this OPPO um, A3. Very good, Veda, very good. Yes. This is damage of neuron. This is uh, basically the neurons, dopaminergic neurons, okay? They're affected by it. So, extra, so basically, um, extra pyramidal effects are there, okay? Uh, okay, Zenab is there. Good Zenab. Okay, so uh, you know what happens is this Parkinson disease is already causing immobility. And now if you take this medicine, extra pyramidal effects would be there more and the disease would would be exaggerated. So we don't take this medicine in that particular scenario. Okay, so another thing, doperidol use is associated with QT prolongation and tercet de pointis and has a black box forming. Um, okay. All right. So what is this um, QT prolongation? QT is this thing, okay? Here, we are talking about ventricle, like how exactly with what force ventricles are uh, contracting and everything, okay? So in short, at your level, I should tell you that uh, the heart takes uh, much time to, you know, um, to pump and all that. And this terse said the point is, okay? This is actually, um, they're, they're saying, um, I, I don't know why they're, that wait a minute i inserted one diagram okay i tell you uh wait a minute i'll draw that for you guys uh wait okay so you see like this okay so i said the point is it's like that okay so you see you can you can all see that what i'm doing is i'm just scribbling because here there's tachycardia okay and like beats go high as 200 uh, beats per minute, okay? And the sometimes the components of the this uh, QRST wave, it's a QRS wave, it's not even there, okay? So it's very dangerous, okay? 
black box warning. What is this black box warning? Black box warning is actually on the medicine and it is usually um, there on uh, by the instruction of FDA. Okay. So uh, whenever there is a black box warning, it means you have to see before taking it, you have to check either the medicine would actually, um, uh, would actually help you to get rid of different adverse effects or it would exaggerate some of the adverse effects, okay? So you have to take care of this. Black box warning is by FDA on the medicine. It's on the box, it's on the leaflet and everywhere to warn you guys not to take it. Okay, then is 5-HT3 antagonist, my favorite, favorite, favorite receptor. 5-HT3 antagonist, now these drugs are there, okay, you have to memorize the names. Now these agents are very effective against acute uh, emesis induced by chemotherapy and emesis induced by uh, radiation and post-operative post nausea and vomiting. It means uh, for chemotherapy and post-operative nausea and vomiting, we would give 5-HT3, okay? All right, so they are not effective for motion sickness induced nausea and vomiting administered orally and parenterally uh, except polonisterone which is only administered IV okay polonisterone has a long duration of action with a half-life of 40 hours dose reduction of ordensitron may be necessary for patients with hepatic insufficiency the most common adverse effect of these drugs are headache and mild constipation. Uh, Dolesterone prolongs the QT interval. These agents are often combined with corticosteroids such as dexamethasone to produce an enhanced antiemetic effect. Right, everybody? Okay, now cannabinoids. Okay, so you see these two names, uh, dronabinol and nebulone are preparations of 9-tetrahydrocannabinol and this thing, this molecule, this is an active cannabinoid in marijuana. Now, these drugs act by inhibiting the vomiting center through stimulation of CB1. Remember the first, second or third slide which I showed to you? And agonist, only one receptor was mentioned, that was CB1. So we take this, this drug, uh, this drug in order to get the antiemetic effect. Now, there are alternative ag agents used to control the emesis induced by chemotherapy. Adverse effects include sedation, tachycardia, hypotension, and behavior alterations similar to those associated with the use of marijuana. Now, benzodiazepine. You see, benzodiazepine are anti-anxiolytic agents. Now, what are these anti-anxiolytic agents? These are the drugs which you take when you have anxiety, okay? So in order to get rid of the anxiety, you take these benzodiazepine, okay? Um, this is, again, a very interesting class of medicine which you'd study in your next semester. Uh, to reduce anticipatory emesis, diazepam is useful as a treatment of vertigo and it controls symptoms of Meniere disease in 60% to 70% of the patients. Now, what is this disease? Um, I sometimes feel I have this symptom of the disease whenever I, uh, you know, listen to music through headphones at a very um, uh, high volume. So, I do suffer these, um, you know, symptoms. So what is this? This is muffled hearing or hearing loss, a feeling of pressure in the ear, sudden dizzy spell, and tinnitus. Tinnitus is the ringing, which is, uh, sometimes in the ear you feel the ting sound. That is tinnitus, okay? So uh, this is a disease, and this is the um, control, uh, this is the control for it. Wait a minute. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now it's anti-emetic NK1 antagonist. Now uh, this is epipetent 
and it is an IV product formulation and it, it is used to manage the delayed phase of emesis caused by chemotherapy. Now it is used in combination with 5-HG3 antagonists and corticosteroids, okay? And uh, it is metabolized by uh, cytochrome 3A4 and therefore inhibit the metabolism of other drugs using the same pathway. Uh, drugs that inhibit this may increase its plasma level, okay? So definitely, if, uh, if, if this is being inhibited, so definitely this drug's concentration would increase so much in the blood. So the adverse effects one would feel would be diarrhea and fatigue. Okay, everybody, that is it. Thank you so much.